I have the uh, honor and the privilege today of uh, introducing our guest psalmist today, Mrs. Barbara Cox. So uh, let me give you an introduction. As long as she can recall, Barbara knew the Lord had chosen her to minister his word through songs. At a young age, she remembers singing songs that she had not been taught while, <clears throat> excuse me, while singing in the choir at St. John Baptist Church in Marshall, Texas. Uh, her talent was nerve. She began, she began writing songs. She began writing songs at approximately the age of nine. Amen. Barbara traveled with various choirs while attending Panola Junior College in Carthage, Texas, as well as the University of Texas in Tyler. Texas. In 2000, she released her first. She released her first. She released her first uh, CD titled "Guardian Angel." She later went on to release 21 singles. Come on, y'all! Isn't that a blessing? Yeah. Amen. Her latest release, "Strong Woman," is a salute to all women as they walk in the grace, knowledge, and strength. Uh, since her debut, she has uh, she has been blessed to participate in many endeavors, which include Album of the Year in 2009 from the East Texas Gospel Academy. She was a co-host on a television show, The Big Break, and the host of her very own television show, True Worship, which aired on Harvest Time TV Production Channel 18 in Tyler from 2009 to 2011. She was nominated for the New Artist of the Year with the Praise Factor Family Choice Award in 2017. She published her first children's book titled Hear Me Roar through Redemptress, Redemp, Redemption uh, Press out of Enclave, Washington in 2017. She was a songwriter, she was songwriter of the year, video of the video of the year, artist of the year and author of the year with the Newsom Awards in Baltimore, Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland in 2020. She was also nominated for the author of the year in, with the S&M Award in 2021. She received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the College Elite, the Black Excellence Award on July 23rd of 2022, and, is currently, and she has currently been nominated by the Arizona West Coast Music Awards in several categories. Barbara is a blessed mother of two children. Also, she is a graduate of the S. Barnes Prophetic, Prophetic, I'm sorry, Prophetic Ministry in 2010. Previously, Barbara, I'm sorry, presently, Barbara is under the leadership and the teaching of Pastor Barry at the New Days Community Church in Tyler, Texas. She is an anointed, humble, and loving person that loves the Lord. We're excited to introduce to you this multi-talented singer, writer, and producer, Miss Barbara Cox. <laughs> Father Lord God, we thank you today. Father, we thank you for restoring this very foundation. We thank you for this woman of God, Father Lord God, as we celebrate her and her years of ministry. Father Lord God, we thank you for this entire congregation today, Father. And everyone that sits here today, Father, as you pour into them, Father, you restore them today. Today, someone needs to be restored. Father Lord God, someone today needs to be restored. Someone sitting here today needs to hear a word from you, Father. Need to be touched, need to be healed from the crown of their head to the very sole of their feet. Father, Lord God, I thank you as you allow me to sit in the back of the congregation so that I can see and feel your people. I thank you, Father, for putting me in position, Lord God, to be poured into and then to pour out. Father, Lord God, there's somebody today that needs to be restored. Father, Lord God, touch their minds, touch their hearts, touch their very soul. In the name of Jesus, and we celebrate again. Tasha, Tasha, 
grows there. Continue to pour into our Father. Live your life, focus up the light. 
And keep on moving Ooh. Living in love Don't you know you're the child of the highest being So embrace those frowns And straighten up your crown Ooh. You don't need the spotlight Everything will be alright Just hold on Y'all right. standing on the holy ground. Alright, I feel it when I came in. It's gonna be, it's gonna be alright. Woo! Sing it with me. It's gonna be alright. standing on. How do you restore that very foundation that you are standing on? You listen to God. You don't listen to anyone else. You, 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 you try to block out everything around you and you hear from God. God had to teach me how to shut everything up so that I could hear from him. I had to shut up face, shut down Facebook. I had to shut down TikTok. And my family tell you, I do a lot of TikTok and I, I post all the time. But God had me to shut it down so that he can restore the very foundation that I'm walking on. He had me to shut down some of the phone calls and the conversations that I had so he could restore the very foundation. That's why he intended for no other soul to be played because he needed to minister through me today because somebody out there needs to be restored. Somebody needs to restore the very foundation that they are standing on. You're standing on holy ground when you walk up in here. This woman right here is celebrating not just her years of services, but her years that she has walked, her beautiful feet that she has walked on this foundation that has been restored because God has poured into you. It had been easy, but God has poured into you. And because God has poured into you, this is my classmate, y'all. This is the time right here. This is my classmate. Y'all, I'm about to cry. Because the last time she asked me to come, I couldn't come. But I said, God, I got to get there today. And all I could hear was the word restore. He said, there were people here today. He had me to sit in the back so that I could feel everyone in here, including my own family. Amen. He didn't want me to sit here. He wanted me to sit. And I asked, as mom, it's okay if I sit in the back. Because I was humbling myself and allowing the Holy Spirit to take over. Not me, move me out the way. All this is just filthy rags. I ain't nothing without him. I ain't never been a person that asked for the spotlight. So when you heard the beginning of the song where it says you don't need the spotlight, I ain't never asked for it. But I did ask God to shine through me. And not only did I ask him, he said, that's what I put you here for. 
Pastor, you was put here for the light to shine through you. You were put here for the light to shine through you. You were put here for the light to shine through you. My sisters, you were put here for the light to shine through you. I was put here for the light to shine through me. I don't need the spotlight, but I need the light for Christ to shine through me. And if I don't do nothing else, I let the light shine through me. Because I ain't perfect, but the light that shines through me builds me up, it restores me. So today, God says that he's going to restore the very foundation that you stand on. If you are lacking that, that spiritual upbringing, that spirit, whatever it is you're lacking today, when you stand in this sanctuary, you're going to receive it from this amazing, anointed, beautiful woman of God. Amen. God is restoring this place. He is restoring the very foundation you walk on. And when you walk home, that foundation as you walk in, the residue from here goes into that household. As you touch someone in your household, the residue of God is there. And you're going to restore this foundation and the foundation that you walk into. Today, my name is Barbara Cox, if you didn't know it. God gave me that name through my mother, Cosetta Cox, my father, Frank Cox, and my Intox Cox family. We are here to say, today you're going to be restored. Today you're going to be restored. Because this woman of God obeyed the voice of God, and she said, I'm going to, I'm going to book Barbara Cox. Do y'all know how many times I've never booked in my own hometown? Do y'all know how many times I've never booked in the city that I've, that I've been in as an adult, Tyler Taylor? I'm not booked. But the anointing of God is in me. It on me is so heavy to when somebody cares enough to hear the voice of God and not only hear it, but to quickly move. And I told her, I said, I don't care what you give me. I'm not going to charge you. You're my friend. Not only as a, as a classmate, but a woman of God that sees the gift in me. Everybody don't do that. They're so busy caught up in trying to win awards and all that stuff. And I'm not caught up in that. I'm not. I just want the light to shine through me. Thank you for caring enough to invite me here today. Y'all give the Lord a hand clap of praise, amen. We give the Lord our praise to us is good, amen. And as the song is said today, you just got to know that everything's going to be all right, amen. All right, all right. Come on, man. All right, all right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We greet you today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We honor the Lord for my classmate, y'all. Let me tell y'all something. Amen. Glory to God. I know the Lord got jokes, amen, <laughs> glory to God, because he called me in the ministry, amen, hallelujah, and it's not the place that uh, I saw myself, amen, but it's the place where the Lord put me, amen, and so if, if we can reflect back over some of those, oh, Lord, he's good, amen, glory to God, give the Lord a hand clap of praise, hallelujah, y'all are so excited about God, amen. Hallelujah. So what we're going to do is, what's going to happen is I'm going to pray, and then we'll make our Bible confession, and then we're going to get into the Word for this morning. Because even though it's a celebration, I still have an assignment. I have things that I have to do. Amen. Glory to God. And so we're going to pray, and we'll make our Bible confession, and then we'll get into the Word for uh, this morning. Father God, we honor you today, and I thank you for this time. Father, I thank you as I continue to die to myself that the Spirit of the living God will rise up in me and say those things that need to be said. Father, I thank you that my mouth is on line with the truth of your word and that you will bring back to my remembrance every testimony, every scripture that's going to make this word plain and simple to us today. Father, we acknowledge you. Hallelujah, Lord God. And we thank you for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you for being in this place. Truly, you know what's on the heart and mind of God. And you know what every person underneath the sound of my voice have need of this day. Holy Spirit, I ask you to think through me, speak through me, meet the need of all of God's people through me this very day. Thank you that the very compassionate nature of Jesus flows out of my heart and through my lips, and that the lives of your people will never be the same. Thank you for confirming your word with signs, wonders, and miracles to follow, and that it will be so simple that even the children can understand it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. amen. Glory to God. Let us make our Bible confession. Hallelujah. We're going to say it like we mean it. Glory to God. This is my Bible. The Bible is the word of God. I believe this word. I love, I love this word. Today, Today I, will be I will be taught the word of God. Word of God. My, mind my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. Heart is I'm, a I'm a hearer 
and the doer, and, the and my life, life will never be the same. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And how I many you know your life ain't going to never be the same? Amen. Hallelujah. We appreciate that cowboy jersey for walking in the place. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Got distracted, but let me get back on course. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. How do you know that the word of God is working in you, amen? amen? And so I want you to understand that it is an inside-out work, amen? That word is working on the inside, and it's producing fruit or a harvest on the outside. And so you have to understand that every time that you hear the word of God, it's being planted in your heart. And how I many you know our hearts are a cultivated field, amen? They tell me when a field is cultivated, that means it's ready to produce some collard greens. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so the word is is being planted in your heart like a seed. And every time you hear this word, it's being planted as a seed. And then the word is being watered. And before you know it, God is going to give the increase. So don't you ever think that the word of God is not working. It's changing your life. And before you know it, glory to God, hallelujah, you're not going to want to say the stuff that you used to say. Come on now. You're not going to want to go to places that you used to go. Come on, it's working. And you're not going to want to do some of the stuff that you used to do that didn't line up with God's word. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Turn your Bible to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And uh, this is our foundation text. As we have been on a series of lessons and we're going to do a, a real quick overview and then we're going to jump into some new ground. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 is our foundation text. As we have been talking about uh, uh, the reverence of the church. Amen. Glory to God. How do you know that some people think that there's just no need for church? Come on now. There's no need to, to come to church. There's no need to, to gather together. Some people just think that the church is what? It's outdated. Come on now. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Glory to God. But what we need to find out and what we need to understand is what is the church. And as we begin to understand what is the church, the purpose of the church, and why God established the church, then we're going to be able to determine the relevance of church. And so if I had to take a title, amen, for today's lesson, it would be Why Church Slash Set in the Church. Amen. Glory to God. Matthew chapter uh, 19 and uh uh, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 is our foundation text, and this is where we'll start reviewing. And when we give a foundation text, it's your meditation. Amen. Glory to God. So that you can meditate on the word of God. Look at verse 16. Glory to God. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so, you know, Jesus was asking his disciples, He said, Whom do man say I am? You know, what's the word on the street about me? Glory to God. And some of his disciples or apostles, they said, well, some say you are one of the great prophets, or some say you are uh, Elijah. So, so they had a whole bunch of revelation of who other people said, amen, that he was. And so Jesus looked at them and he said, now who do you say I am? Come on now. And see, I, I just, I, I'm just so uh, uh, excited. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because I'm not moved by popular opinion. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on now. And so once we get to a point where we're not moved, moved by popular opinion, the only thing that matters is what God says we are. Amen. Or who God says we are. Amen. And how I many you know God has said great things about you and he has a great purpose for your life. Come on now. And once once you know who you are in Christ Jesus, it don't matter what the word is on the street. Amen. Hallelujah. Get a Lord that head level praise. Come on now. Hallelujah. Then the scripture goes on to read uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, and, and verse 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh, for flesh, for flesh. And blood had not revealed it unto thee. Now listen, there are some things, amen, that you are not, not going to understand if you're just uh, uh, dependent on flesh and blood. Come on now. In other words, there are just some things that you're not going to understand if you are looking in the natural. Come on. There are some things that you're not going to get. There are some things that you're not going to receive. There are some things that you're not going to know if you're stuck looking in the natural. Come on. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on now. And so we got to get out of, listen, we got to get out of what the scripture 
scripture says is carnality. Amen. In other words, we got to stop dealing with stuff through our senses or our emotions. Amen. Or through our soulish realm. Come on now. And we cannot be dictated by our soul, which includes our emotions and how we feel. Come on now. And those things that we see in the natural. We're going to have to learn how to elevate our lifestyle, elevate our life, and learn how to be ruled. Come on now. By the spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Paul, uh, Peter, uh, Jesus said to uh, Peter, he said, now flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. Amen. Ain't no way you got this in from the flesh. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed are thou, Simon, uh, of our Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. I will establish my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. So let me say this to you, amen, glory to God. I don't care what happens in this life, amen, glory to God. As long as heaven and earth remains, glory to God, the gates of hell will never overcome the church. Come on, now, give the Lord a hand clap of grace. Come on, now, glory to God. And so you get to understand, hallelujah, that the church is a living organ, uh, uh, organism, amen. It is a living vessel. It is a living uh, uh, organism that has an assignment in, in the earth realm. Glory to God. And y'all know on last Sunday we began to talk about the universal church. Glory to God. And we said in order for you to become a member of the universal church, all you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. When you open up your mouth and you made a confession of your faith and you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then the Holy Spirit, come on now, took residence well on the inside of your spirit. Amen. And now you have been baptized into the spirit and you are the member of the church. Glory to God. You know what I have to Come on now. Y'all are excited about this word. Amen. Glory to God. And then we begin to talk about the local church. Come on. Amen. And, and, and we, we begin to understand that the local church is, should be a reflection of the universal church. So whatever's happening in the universal church, glory to God, you should see a reflection of that in the local church. Glory to God. Now listen, we gave us a good example last week, amen. Glory to God. We began to talk about all the different places where there's a Walmart. Come on now. You know, there's a Walmart in Morrison. Amen. There's a Walmart where? In Longview. As a matter of fact, it's about three of them there, amen. There's a Walmart in Dallas. And then uh, there's a Walmart, amen, glory to God, in Virginia, in Suffolk, Virginia. There's one in Norfolk, Virginia. There's one in Hampton News, amen, New Hampton, uh, uh, Hampton News, uh, uh, Virginia. And I said that because there are seven cities inside of, uh, of, of, of the Virginia where my cousin lived. And so, y'all, I was fascinated by all the different Walmarts that was all over the place, amen. Glory to God. It's just a Walmart, wow. Everywhere, amen. Glory to God. Now, listen. I don't care how many Walmarts there is. Come on now. There's only one what? Sam Walton. Amen. Glory to God. And so you got to understand the body of Christ. There are many members what? In the body of Christ. There are many members in the body of Christ. And we have to learn how to look outside and begin to see the vastness and the bigness of the body of Christ. But how do you know? There's only one Lord. Come on now. There's only one Savior. Come on now. And there's only one baptism. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Y'all, this is so good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now look at this. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Because we need to understand. You know, and I was thinking about this uh, this morning. Because uh, uh, Barbara, in my mindset, I was headed to corporate America. Amen. Amen. Uh, never to see Marshall, Texas again. Amen. Glory to God. And so I begin to really understand the corporate structure. Amen. I understand how corporations run and how they're organized. And when I begin to think about the awesomeness of God, how many of you know that he wants his will done well on earth as it is well in heaven? Amen. And so just like there's a corporate structure, guess what? In the earth realm that we can understand on the business side, God has a heavenly corporate structure. Amen. Glory to God. And so inside of God's corporate structure, he has a great deal of organization. Amen. How many know God is organized? Glory to God. And wherever there is a, a chaos and wherever there's a lack of peace, there's a good chance that there's not God. Amen. Glory to God. Because God moves in the peace. Amen. And God don't necessarily like chaos. Even though he can move in chaos. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, I kind of get the wonder when I see something that's chaotic. Amen. Because wherever there's envy 
and confusion and strife, there's what? Every evil work. And so when I see a bunch of confusion, I begin to wonder, amen. God, is this you or is this not you, amen? Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Now look at this. Ephesians chapter 4. And uh, we're going to begin to look at the corporate, the heavenly corporate structure, amen. How God, listen at this, and all his wisdom has organized the body of Christ. How many know that there's one body of Christ and he's the head? Come on now. But there are what? Many members, many members, many members, many members. So if you would think about it on this scale, every person that opened up their mouth and made a confession of their faith and accepted Jesus Christ as their personal and Savior, then they are what? A member of what? The body of Christ. It could be in Marshall, Texas. It could be in California. It could be, hey, California, how you doing? It could be uh, uh, in, in Germany. It could be in Israel. It could be in Russia. Wherever someone has opened up their mouth and made a confession of their faith, we understand that they are adopted or they're translated or they're set, hallelujah, in the universal body. Amen. Glory to God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Now look at this. Ephesians chapter 4. And uh, uh, let me start reading at uh, uh, verse 1. That's just a good place to just jump right in there and start reading. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherein ye are called. Amen. And so when you begin to study the vocation where ye are called, amen, glory to God, God requires us to walk worthy of that, amen. Now listen to me because I'm going I'm to I'm tell you something, amen, that's going to really bless you, amen. Your vocation, amen, could also be known as your occupation. Come on now. In other words, there's a natural and there's a what? Spiritual. And so even on your occupation, come on now, you need to walk worthy of it because I don't care what you say, if you got a job and you're happy about it, or if you got a career and you satisfied about it, guess what? God has set you well in that place, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on. So we need to walk worthy. Glory to God. He says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that she walk worthy of the vocation with which ye are come, with our lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing. And Lord have mercy. We want another in love. Amen. How many of y'all know on Wednesday nights we're talking about love? Come on now. Because in order for us to get to the position in the body that God is looking for or uh, uh, he wants to move through, we're going to have to learn how to walk in love. Amen. In other words, when we say it's forbearing one another in love, he's talking about we got to learn how to put up with some folk. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't care what they done done to you, how they done talked about you, how they done ostracized and criticized and scandalized your name. Come on. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We got to learn how to put up with some stuff, amen? For bearing one another with what? Love. And that love is the maturing factor in our life. And so as we learn how to be what God is, because God is what? He is love. And in order for us to, him to be able to flow through us, amen, to let that love of God that's been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit, amen, to, to reach the world, then we're going to have to learn how to put up with some stuff, amen? Amen. It might not be comfortable. Come on now. And we might not even like to do it. Amen. Glory to God. But guess what? We got to learn how to forbear one another. What? In love. Amen. Glory to God. Now look at this. This is going to bless you because it's definitely blessing me. He says for, uh, for uh, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen at this. It don't make no sense for us to have local church fights. Amen. Because we should be walking in unity, amen, glory to God, endeavoring to keep the what? Peace, glory to God, hallelujah. I mean, you know, it's okay to be a peacemaker. Come on now, I'm a peacemaker, amen. And I don't care what the situation is, amen. There's a way that we can come in unity. If Listen to this, I'm especially talking to the body of Christ, amen. Because we got to learn how to not allow there to be divisions among us, amen. In order for us to fulfill and for God to flow through his body the way he wants to. So we can see some miracles. So we can see some healings. So we can see some a whole deliverance to come forth. Amen. We got to learn how to be in unity with one another. Amen. And if we can agree, come on now, that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Come on. We all ought to be able to say the same thing and unify uh, uh, on the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of what? Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. How many know that will keep us all in peace? Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a head clap of praise. Come on. Hallelujah. We walk in the word out. Amen. He says, he says, uh, he says, uh, endeavor, endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace. 
For there is what? One body. There is what? One spirit. Even as you are called in one what? Hope of your calling. How many know that that hope is Jesus? Come on now. Yes, listen, I, I, listen, you're not going to be able to find hope in nothing else. I, I'm going to tell you right now. This might not be a popular message, but it's the truth. You know, we out there trying to find hope in a whole lot of other stuff. Amen. The only way that you're going to find hope is you have to anchor yourself in Jesus. Amen. You're going to have to accept by faith what he's done. Amen. Glory to God. And then, then begin to build your foundation. What? On the word of God. Amen. Glory to God. Ain't no peace in our all been that done that. Amen. Ain't no peace in drugs been that done that. Amen. Ain't no peace in none of that stuff. Ain't no peace in having multiple sexual partners. Amen. Glory to God. The only peace and hope that you're going to find is where? In Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give him Lord, the hands up and it's all right. It's the truth, Lord of God. Listen at this. Verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one, bap one baptism, one God and one Father of all, who is above all, hallelujah, and through all, and guess what? In you all. He's in you. Amen. <laughs> wow, y'all, y'all, when I got the revelation of the Holy Spirit inside of me, I got so excited, amen, glory to God, to know that all that God is, all that God has, the same power that raised Jesus Christ up from the dead, come on now, it resides on the inside of me, amen, and I don't care, amen, the scriptures say that the enemy is underneath, amen, the feet of Jesus, so that means the enemy is underneath the feet of Tasha, amen, glory to God, give the Lord a hand clap of praise, so there's nothing that can overcome you, nothing, come on, I can get by you, amen, and nothing, 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 come on now, can be victorious over you, amen, glory to God, give the Lord a hand clap of praise, the word is so good. Glory to God. Now look at this. This is so good. He said, one God, one faith of all, which is above all and through all, and in you all. But to every one of us is given grace. There's that grace. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. So there's a grace according to the measure of the gift that God has released through you, in you, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So whatever God has uh, designed a purpose for you to accomplish in this earth realm, whatever it is, your gift, amen, and we're going to get to talking about those in just a minute, there's a grace for you to operate in. So you got to understand, listen, God ain't going to never ask you to do something on your own. Come on. Glory to God. If he's called you and, he is, and, and you are walking in your giftedness, then there's a grace that's available just for you. Amen. I mean, you know, I need all my grace. Come on now. Glory to God. I need all the grace that God got for me. So do what God has called me to do. And so you need the grace. You need to understand that you're not out there by yourself. Come on. He is with you. And the scriptures say he will never leave you, nor will he what? He forsake you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's look at this. Because this is going to bless you. Because it's blessing me. Glory to God. Now, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the, the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts what? Unto men. That was our cliffhanger last week. Amen. Glory to God. Now listen. We're going to start examining some of these gifts so you can find yourself. Amen. You got to know how to find yourself. Why? Because you want to be pro productive where? In the body of Christ. As a member of the body of Christ, you need to know uh, your giftedness or what uh, area that God has called you in. Amen. So you can release the grace. Come on now. And then, y'all, listen, we got a lot of work to do. Amen. How many of y'all, this is the last of the last days. Amen. And we have an assignment. The body of Christ has an assignment. Amen. Glory to God. That must be fulfilled before the return of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Now listen at this. This is going to bless you. And I'm going to set a lot of people free. Amen. Glory to God. Listen at this. But unto every uh, one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he has said when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. Now he that also ascended, what is it? But he also descended. For, uh, for into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same. Glory to God. That has ascended up, up for above all things. That he might fill all things. Here we go. And he gave some what? Apostles. He gave some what? Prophets. He gave some what? Evangelists. He gave some what? Pastors. He gave some what? And teachers. Amen. Now listen to me. I want you to highlight that song. Amen. Because some ain't all. Come up now. 
And so let me set you free. Everybody ain't called to operate, listen at this, in the five-fold ministry office. Amen? Everybody not called. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's right. Thank you, brother. Everybody not called. Amen? So listen. <laughs> So if you are, if you are operating, amen, hallelujah, listen to this. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost, help me to say this. Help me, Lord, and you don't call yourself. Come on now. Then there's no grace to operate. Come on now. And so you wonder why your, your life is looking shabby and you're going through things and you're doing stuff, amen, that you wouldn't normally do. It's because you're operating in a position that there's no grace for you, amen. Give the Lord a hand up grace. That's why you got to find your grace. Come on now. This is my grace. It says pastor slash teacher. Some of the uh, translations say the word and is not in there, amen? But it's pastor teacher. And how many of you know I'm a pastor what? Teacher, amen? I'm literally a pastor and what? In the, in the world of what? Teacher. Come on now. Pastor teacher, amen? And someone set you free. Don't you let nobody call you? Come on now. Because there's no grace for you there. If God has not ordained your life and called you to operate in the five-fold ministry office, guess what? There's no grace. And guess what? That's why your life looking shabby. Because there's no grace for you to do it. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of grace. Come on now. <laughs> Help me, Lord. It goes. Glory to God. And y'all, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. That's how come a church can't call a pastor. Amen. And a bunch of deacons can't call a pastor. Because they don't know. Glory to God. Give the Lord a hand clap of grace. <laughs> Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to tiptoe on out of that one. Amen. Glory to God. Now, we got to stick with the scriptures. Amen. I heard the other day, amen, I was somewhere, and I heard the other day, that the deacon board, glory to God, and we got to understand the place for deacons, amen, that the deacon board was fighting because they didn't want to give a pastor an anniversary. Who does that? Come on now. Who fight to bless the man or woman of God? Don't you know that your blessing is tied up in the advancement of the man or woman of God? And so as the man or woman of God go up, guess what you do? You go what? Up. As the blessings begin to flow in the life of the man or woman of God, guess what? They flow well in your life. It's the craziest thing I ever heard, amen? Come on now. We got to stick to this. That's why we got to get a revelation of the scriptures. Amen. Glory to God. And I, you listen, I, uh, this, my, uh, my brother, y'all know my brother, Pastor Bill, amen, for a long time, he had to talk to me, he had to, he had to talk to me, he said, now you need to take a salary from your church, he said, you got to do that, I said, well, Pastor, you know, I said, bro, I said, brother, you know, we growing, and, you know, it's just so many other things I could, I could be doing with that, you know, and I could be doing this over here, he said, no, 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 you need to take a salary from your church. And then he found out, oh, heaven, Holy Ghost. Then he found out that the musician at that time was making more money than the pastor. Wow! And he got on me. Come on now. Because if I don't take a saddle or allow you to sow precious seed into my life, I make this church ineffective. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of grace. That's what the scripture says, amen. And so I won't have God, uh, I won't be doing all this work at the body be ineffective. Come on now. Glory to God. Now look at this. This is going to bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Pastor, do take a salary from this church. And if I told you how much it was, you say, Pastor, you need to get some more money. Yeah, yeah that's what you would say. Amen. Amen. But how I many you know? Glory to God. If you be faithful in that which is little. Amen. Amen. God will elevate you. Come on now. And he'll give you much. Amen. So I'm faithful over my salary. I'm grateful for my salary. Amen. And guess what? Hallelujah. As long as I stay faithful and grateful, he'll eventually elevate and give me more. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand out of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now let me get you this one blessing. Because it's blessing me. Uh, we already talked about it. Everybody ain't come. Amen. To the five-fold ministry of grace. Amen. Now let me help you. When we're talking about the body of Christ, and we're talking about the division in the body of Christ or the gifts in the body of Christ. How do you know that there are ministerial gifts? Amen. There are spiritual gifts. Amen. And then there's the fivefold ministry gifts. Amen. Glory to God. So somewhere in those gifts, amen, that God has released, amen, you're going to be able to find yourself. But I'm going to help you to let you know. Glory to God. That everybody not called to the fivefold ministry gift. And don't you be down on yourself if you're not called. Amen. As a matter of fact, you need to celebrate yourself. Amen. Glory to God. Because how I many of you know the fire is hotter on this side? Come on. Glory to God. Now look at this. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Amen. 
And we're going to... Uh, we're going to uh, give you an introduction, amen, glory to God, and uh, we're going to step into these in, in, in just a minute, amen, glory to God. How many know we talked about the three areas? There are ministry gifts, amen, glory to God, hallelujah. There are the fivefold office gifts of graces, amen, and then there are what? Spiritual gifts, amen, glory to God. Now let's go down this list of a ministry gifts, amen, How? You can help. Amen. Listen like this. And I, I want us to get off of the local body. Amen. I want us not to focus so much on the local body. And yes, the, the local body should, the, the universal church should mirror the local body. But when we start just focusing on the local body, we make Christ the work that he wants to do smart. Amen. So I want, when we start thinking about this, I want you to think about your place in two places. In the universal church. Amen. Glory to God. And then in this local church where God has set you. And I'm so glad that El Palmer used that scripture. Amen. Because the scriptures surely say it, that God will give you what? Pastors after his what? Oh, heart. Amen. Somebody that will feed you and nurture you in what? The word of God. Amen. And so if you are here and you're a member of this church, amen, God has set you here for such a what? A time as this. Amen. Glory to God. And so I want you to begin to see bigger. Amen. Bigger. Bigger. Okay. Glory to God. Now look at this. Hallelujah. Uh, let's look at, uh, well, yeah, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And uh, let's start reading at, uh, I said verse 27. Yeah, verse 27. Listen at this. Now we're talking about the gifts, the ministry gifts. Amen. You won't find yourself in one of these, in this list. You might have found yourself in the first, in the, in the five-fold office gifts. Amen. You might have found yourself there. But if you did, you better come see me. Amen. So I can solidify that and make it solid in your life. Amen. Glory to God. Now look at this. This is going to bless you because it's blessing me. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 27. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. So all y'all, y'all listen to me. Guess what? On social media, guess what? You are all part of what? The body of Christ. And members. Amen. You are members in the body of Christ. And God has set some in the church. Amen. You know, I thought about that word for a minute, and I'm going to have to dig it out to see if he was using the church and the body of Christ interchangeably. He could have really been focusing on the, the gathering of believers together. Amen. Or he could have been looking at church as it relates to the body of Christ. How many of you know the church is what? The body of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Then he goes on to say, this is going to bless you because it's blessing me. Now, you are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has said some in the church, first apostles, secondarily, come on now, prophets, thirdly, what? Teachers. After that, miracles, the gifts of healing, helps, governments, and diversities of tongues. Then he goes on to say, Y'all, and we're going we gonna, to we gonna dig into this deeper. Then he goes on to say, because I don't want nobody not to feel like they got a place. He says, are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do I all speak with tongues? Do I all interpret it? But honestly, he said, I need you to cut it earnestly, the best gift, and yet I will show you a what? A more excellent way. He said, listen, I, I, listen, I don't want you to be upset. Because all of you are not going to operate in an apostolic anointing. Come on now. How do you know? I sit under apostle. Amen. I sit under an apostle. Amen. His name is Leroy Thompson. He is apostle Dr. Leroy Thompson. And because I sit under his ministry, there's an apostolic anointing that's flowing what? Through me. Amen. And so I have the right to operate in the apostolic. Y'all, and let me ask you, you ain't got to be confused. An apostle is just someone who is sent with a special message. Hey, Amen. Get along and have a place. Come on now. I mean, you know, I got a special message. Come on now. And my message is, help me on the go. You don't have to struggle with poverty anymore. Amen. Glory to God. God has released, listen, he has released a covenant anointing and a will for your life. See, I got a special message, amen. And I sit under an apostle, so therefore I have an apostolic anointing that flows in my life. Come on now. At this church, we have a local apostle. And when I tell y'all, hey amen, she can't stand uh, stuff that get out of order. And she be on me when stuff don't be right. And she definitely have a special message, amen, that she will give you. Just try her and see, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Get along the heaven of Christ. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Now look at this. Amen. Glory to God. So don't, don't be upset. If that one didn't hit you, that's not you. Amen. He said now, secondarily prophets. And let me talk about this one for just a minute. Amen. Glory to God. 
How many know a ministry is established on the apostolic and the prophetic? Amen. Amen. That, that is the foundation for every ministry. Amen. Now listen, is everybody a prophet? No, everybody's a prophet. Now let me give you a clue. Amen. I'm finna tell you. I'm finna help you. Amen. Glory to God. Because if you don't have no prayer life, don't come to me telling me you're a prophet. Because a prophet got to hear the voice of God. Amen. And be able to release what God is saying. And so if you don't spend no time communing with God, don't come and tell me you're no prophet. Amen. How you gonna hear what God says? Give the Lord a hand. Grab a praise. Come on. You got to commune with God. So listen, if you feel there's an inclination in your life for the prophetic, amen, the first step is your prayer life. Amen. How much time are you communing with the Lord? Amen. How much time are you developing a personal relationship with you and God where you are communing with him and he's communing with you and you don't learn how to hear his voice and you are hearing him. Amen. That is, listen, that is level one of developing the prophetic in your life. You got to be able to hear the voice of God. Listen, the scriptures say, my sheep know my what? Voice. And so, if you come to me talking about, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, and you don't got no prayer life? You ain't talking to the Lord? Oh, my God. Oh, it's going to be hard for me to receive it. Come on now. Listen, glory to God. Amen. 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 Glory to God. You want to have that praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen at this. If you don't have no word in you, what you going to prophesy? Come on now. So you got to be able to hear the voice of God, know it's God, and then what you say, what you release prophetically out of your mouth, should line up with what the Word of God is saying. So you can't prophesy to me anything. Come on now. Listen, and listen, y'all, listen, listen. Help me hold it up. Oh, we honor the Lord for this prophet, amen. We receive a gift, amen. Glory to God. But listen to me. There are some people who have gotten so entangled by the prophetic. Amen. And you have to be careful. That's why you got to get the word. That's why you got to know the word. Amen. Don't let nobody grab you out the bathroom and start proper lying to you. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on. Don't let it happen. Amen. They got drive-by prophets now. They got prophets on TV that say, if you send me 99, 99, I'll send you a bottle of oil. Come on now. Y'all, we got to, listen, we can't be deceived. Amen. We cannot be deceived. You got to be able to, the scriptures say, try the spirit, what? By the spirit, so you'll know what matter of what spirit it is. Come on now. So you got to know. It's time out for me just knowing. Amen. I can discern. Yes, amen. Glory to God. But then you got to know for your own life. Amen. And you don't have to be rude. You don't have to, listen, I was at a big meeting. Amen. I was at a real big meeting. Big meeting, big meeting. Hundreds, about 10,000 folks was there. Amen. And the prophetess came out because they were here to take up that offer. Amen. And the prophetess came out and said, I heard the Lord say, everybody in the building give $100. That's what the prophet said. The prophetess. I heard the Lord say, everybody in the building give $100. Okay. Then about a few minutes later, she said, oh, I heard the Lord say, everybody in the building give $50. And then a few minutes later, she said, I heard the Lord say, Everybody, key word, give $25 to bring your best offer. Now, which one did the Lord say? Because you said you heard the Lord say to everybody. Amen. God ain't saying that. He ain't said that. Now, the last thing God said is probably what God said. He said, tell everybody to bring their best offer. That's probably what the Lord said, for real. Amen. Give the Lord a hand up and But you got to know. Now, how many, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I know it's on social media, but it's just the truth. How many of y'all know a whole lot of people run down for the $100 line? Whole lot of people run down for the $50 line. Come on now. Whole lot of people run down for the $25 line. And I got it with the best offer. Amen. Come on now. Amen. You got to know. Amen. You got to know for yourself. Amen. Don't, nobody, don't, listen, don't you let nobody hoodwink you in your finances. Amen. And, and, and you know, that's why pastor don't do second offers. Amen. I don't do Amen. Because I know my church. And if you are here as a member of, of this church, I'm going to teach you how to be spirit led by the spirit in your what? Give it. God might say today, give a thousand out. Well, if that's what God said, it's up to you to give it. Amen. It's not up to me to ask you to give it. Come on now. God may say give a quarter. If that's your best offer, then that's what God said. Put it in the bucket. Let us bless it. And watch God give you a return on it. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Clap of praise. Y'all are excited. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at this. We got to find a place to jump off at. Amen. Glory to God. Listen to this. 
or all apostles, or all prophets, or all teachers, or all workers. Wait a minute, uh, uh, a miracle. Wait a minute, uh, help me. Go back, Holy Ghost, verse 1 8. And God has said some in the church, first apostles, second prophets, thirdly teachers. Amen. And how I many you know it's a blessing when you can get taught the word of God? Amen. Amen. Now, I like good preaching like everybody else. Every now and then, I need to hoop and holler and run around the church and turn about 37 flips. Amen. <laughs> I like good preaching. Come on now. Because the purpose of it is to exhort you, to build you up, to get you on fire where you can go run like never before. Amen. That's the purpose of it. So I like good preaching. Amen. Glory to God. But God has so graced me, amen, that he's made me a teacher so that you can understand when you're getting some good preaching. Amen. Give the Lord a hand grab a praise. Come on. Good preaching don't come out of Jet Magazine. Come on. It comes from the word of God. So you got to know. Listen, you got to know when a preacher is preaching and it hits your spirit. Amen. And it's talking to you. Glory to God. Listen at this. This is going to bless you because it's blessing me. Uh, he said, and uh, some prophets thoroughly teach you. After that, miracles and gifts of healing. Now, I'm convinced that this is where God, you know, uh, we are the sons and daughters of Israel called, we know the season, times of the season. And I'm convinced that this is where God is trying to uh, maneuver his body. Because it's time for miracles to be working in the body of Christ. Not randomly, but all the time. Amen. You need to be able to walk into the church, a local church, uh, 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 wherever you are gathered as a believer and get a miracle released in your life. Amen. People need miracles. That's supernatural surprise. In other words, God working outside of his normal to produce something in your life. How many of you know, amen, people need supernatural healings, amen, working in their life. They need that. The, the Bible says that these signs shall follow the believers. They shall lay hands on the sick, and guess what? They'll recover. But if the body don't know, and if the body not positioned, and if the body don't know what they're called, come on now, how can that anointing flow? Amen? So you got to know your area. You got to know your gift. You got to know where you are. And you got to operate in that grace. Because there's somebody that's waiting to receive a gift of healing. There's somebody that's waiting to receive a miracle in their life. Amen? Guess what? And they can't all come through me. Come on now. It's got to come through the body of Christ. Amen. It's got to come through the members of the body of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We're on our way. We're on our way to a stepping a stopping place. Glory to God. He says now. He says, thirdly, he says, miracles and gifts and healings. Helps. And governments. Helps governments and diversities of tongues. Now, I'm going to say this. Everybody in this building. <laughs> Y'all can operate the gift of help in any time you want to, amen. Because that's simply what it means. You help. You're available to help. And how I many of uh, uh, Elder Partner and Apostle, they definitely got to give a help. They've been to help. They'll help you out, amen. They'll help you in, they'll help you under, and they'll help you over, amen. Glory to God. Amen. Everybody, find, listen, find some way you want to help and just help, amen. Glory to God. Because that is a gift. And guess what? There's a grace release for your life just to help, amen. Get a lot of hands up. Hey, come on. Glory to God. And listen, and this is the word we're going to close on right here. There are uh, diversities of tongues, amen, and that's another whole sermon, and we're going to get into that because I, I need you to understand those gifts and how to operate. But what we're going to close in is there are governments, amen, governments. And what I learned, you have to understand that government is a, is a position where of, of administration, uh, 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 a position where you can set policy, a position where you understand policy, you bet, you best understand how things work. Amen. Glory to God. And when I found out that I operated in that gift, amen. When I found out I had that gift, the gift of governments, the gift of administration. When I found out I had it, it set the place for my career. Amen. So, cause how many y'all know? I'm so excited. Uh, Pastor has been in education for they tell me 19 years. Get a lot of hands up for Christ. 19 years. But before that, I was all over the map. Amen. I was everywhere. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. Amen. I spent five years in the in the uh, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years in the technical arena. Amen. I did. Uh, uh, I was a, a product engineer at a company called uh, Carrier in in Tyler, Texas. I did that for a year, for a few years. Amen. I worked out at Eastman. Y'all know Eastman. And Pastor was climbing poles way up high. Amen. And I'd hear that boom, and I go, oh, Lord, hold me, Jesus, hold me, amen. <laughs> I did that for a little while. Pastor, I put in security law systems. Come on now. 
I done did everything that they was taking to do. I don't operate. Yeah, I'm finna age myself now. I help manufacture people. Okay. <laughs> I mean, y'all know what a big man is. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. So I did all kinds of stuff. And it was here a little, there a little. I was here three, four, five years, here two or three years. Four, five years over here, six, seven years over here. Eight years over there. Oh, I just all over the place. Passing and drove a bus. Glory to God. Been an age until I finally found my place. Amen. And it came because I understood. Listen, whatever God desires for you to do, whether it's in the natural and in the spiritual, he has equipped you to do it. Amen. So you need to look on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. If you're trying to figure out where you fit vocationally, look on the inside of you because it's there. He has created you and made you. Uh, the scriptures say that you have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Everything that you need, guess what? It's on the inside of you. So even as you're seeking God, amen, about your place in the body of Christ, then this is a great opportunity to, 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 to seek him about your vocation, your occupation, what you need to be doing. I mean, y'all know, we know we got to work until God do something different, amen? Because the Bible says if a man don't work, guess what he don't do? Eat. <laughs> I mean, y'all know we need to eat. We need some groceries. Amen? So listen, God has put everything on the inside of you that you need. Amen? And we're going to dig in a little deeper because I need for you to uh, identify your, 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 your place in the body of Christ so that it can trickle down to this local body. Amen? Because, I mean, you know, locally we have an assignment. Amen? Glory to God. And we got to spread this, spread the love of God by teaching his word. Amen? How are people going to know that God loves them if we don't teach them? Amen? Amen. And listen, God ain't really calling on what you done done. He's not. Amen? Because he took care of all of that in Jesus. But what he is caught up in is you humbling yourself, submitting your life unto him. Amen? So he can make you and shape you to, in the image of his, of his dear son, Jesus. Amen? That's our, our God will. He wants to flow through you. That's it. Amen? That's it. Glory to God. I know how that word bless you because it blessed me. Get a Lord ahead. Like, hey! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Every eye closed, every head bowed, I'm going to pray. Father God, we honor you today, and we thank you for this word. We thank you for this time. We thank you that you would take this word and seal it in our heart, and that our lives have been made the better because we heard the word. Give us the strength to walk it out according to your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Glory to God. Our hearts and minds clear? They're about all right. Amen. Yeah, the word is good, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I'm looking around, everybody here. Look, listen, let me ask this question because I, 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 I'm looking around, but I, I kind of think so. Listen, uh, is everybody going to be in heaven on Platinum Gold Street next to me? If you know you're going to be in heaven on Platinum Gold Street, go ahead and raise your little hand in there. And you're going to be the defendants. Amen. Yeah, Pastor got a residence. It's on Platinum Gold Street somewhere. Amen. Glory to God. Let us receive our offering today. Amen. Give the Lord a hand because I pray that Apostle Ma, a Ma, a Heidi, I want to know her. Amen. As she comes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God, I tell people they come the first time, well, I invite people to this church, I tell them. If there's something that you should go understand, something that you have got to answer for, if you come, God will give you that answer. So I know everybody has got their word today. Because I know God gave to them. God is a good God. And I'll pass the real time. And she's led by the Spirit. It's not her. She'll tell me all the time, Mama, let me see what I said. She's led by the Spirit of God. Amen. God is speaking to her all the time. I just thank God for her pastor. Okay, let's turn to time. I'll give it time. Let's turn to Psalms 30, 35, 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified. Hallelujah. Have, have pleasure in the prosperity. Have pleasure and prosperity of his servant. You know? So you just give as the Lord leads you to give. You know? And hand of our worship. Amen. Amen. We believe we receive when we give to thee. We believe we receive when we sow our seed. Open up the windows of heaven, Lord. 
for us your blessing on me. We believe we receive when we give to thee. We believe we receive when we sow our seed. Hold up the windows of heaven, Lord, for us your blessing on me. Let it rain, rain down, rain down. Rain down your blessing on me. Yes, it shall be given unto me. Pour out your blessing on me. Oh, we give this offer up to you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We ask the blessed one that gave, Father God, in the name of Jesus, meet the needs, Father God, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Amen. We believe we receive when we give to thee. We believe we receive when we sow our seed. Open up the windows of heaven, Lord, for us your blessing on me. All right, God is celebrations we celebrate Christ in the ministry through our pastor Tasha Rose uh, I'm just grateful for the invite I'm grateful for the, just being here um, if we could just um, take a moment and pray for what's the young lady's name again? Mary. for Mary okay, if we could just pray for a moment for Mary Father Lord God right now in the name of Jesus we ask you to touch Mary Father Lord God and to heal her Father God right now in the name of Jesus allow her Father Lord God to be poured into Father, Father Lord Jesus, as she bring her Father to a place, Lord God, where she hears more clearly, she's more strength, giving her strength, Father Lord God, removing anything that's causing her pain, anything that's causing her to suffer, Father Lord God. Right now we speak healing in the name of Jesus. And we pray for this entire congregation, we pray for the pastor, we pray for the, uh, the ministry, the ministry, the whole, the whole body of Christ. We thank you for allowing us today. We thank you for the word that goes forward as we hide it in our heart. And we will not sin against you, Father Lord God. We thank you for this day. For this is the day that you made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. In Jesus' mighty name. 